Daniel Bodman joining us uh, on the broadcast. He's a journalist and uh, very aware of all that is happening on the ground in Canada. But Daniel, I really want to get your sense on what you think has led to this situation. I mean, India has been warning Canada over and over again to not give a free run to such Khalistani extremists, but they have continued to do so. And India also warned Canada that uh, this is going to come and haunt you at a later point, which is happening now. Is Canada really serious in its intent on dealing with this problem or they are wanting to escalate it? Uh, the current Canadian government is in no way serious in any way, shape or form on any issue approaching seriousness, uh, particularly extremism of all kinds. So, I mean, if you want to look at the Canadian context, I mean, you look at the Indian context and you just see the Canada, the Khalistan, you see Jagmeet Singh, Justin Trudeau on, on, on all the anti-India stuff and you, you look at Nijar and was he, you know, running a terrorist training camp to get people into Pakistan to kill you all. But in the Canadian context, go back a year, we have the accusations going off and, and, and this whole thing pops off. But really, the defining moment in Canadian culture is October 7th or October 8th, right? And that's when our streets became chaos. That's when mobs of extremists truly took over the streets. So, again, let's – poor timeline management, but let's go back again before this. Last Diwali, there were, as the hit Canadian media called it, clashes, and this is a problem with having uh, the fear of saying anything. Calistanis attacked – Hindus on Diwali uh, in a Mississauga Mall, right? And now we have an entire year of chaos on the streets and extremists and police capitulating to it, where you now had the Calistinians bold enough with the repeated attacks from all levels of, of the government. And as you saw, there was a off-duty police officer with them. So um, if they felt they had, it certainly seems that they felt they had enough social license um, to go protest violently outside a Hindu temple uh, on Diwali weekend. So there is the sort of high level sequence events in Canada is you've had a year of chaos on the streets mm -hmm. and you're seeing the escalation of this now where they're, they're going into the Maunders and then uh, the people at the Maunders um, are, you know, standing up and now, the, you know, they went outside the Maunder tonight and enacted a bit of a street blockade um, and this is the this, this is because the police have lost control of the situation. There's no consistency. Hmm. It's not even double standards. It's quantum standards, right? You need there. There are so many different intersectional standards that you kind of know what it's not what is and what isn't allowed in the streets of Canada. It's who is and who isn't allowed to do it on the streets of Canada. And this has led to extreme social chaos. And the most egregious example of that is what happened yesterday when the Calistanis broke into the Maunder and started whacking devotees on the head with giant flags that say Calistan on them. And then no political party in Canada could figure out what the motive possibly was for the people saying they're doing this because of Calistan, hitting people with sticks that say Calistan on them. That's where Canada is in 2024. And it threatens to get worse and worse and worse because Justin Trudeau and his government are fully in bed with all these extremists. If you look at the pattern of who they've propped up, whether it be Calistanis or radical uh, anti-Semites, the amount of anti-Semitism scandals, the money they've given people to advocate for the murder of Jews, Canada currently has a convicted terrorist who blew up a synagogue and killed four people in a synagogue, found guilty in a French court. He's a professor at the University of Concordia mm -hmm. teaching social justice in action. Hmm. That's our country. A convicted terrorist who 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 doesn't ignore the fa uh, justifies the blowing up of synagogue doesn't deny it justifies it. He teaches in our universities, and we are laissez faire. Who cares? This is uh, just unfortunate. But I want to talk to you about uh, Trudeau himself, because the fact is uh, that his own people are critical of him. Fact is that his own economic policies, his own foreign policies are being criticized and he is trying very, very hard to be able to earn that reputation back. On the contrary, he takes his own foot in his mouth, uh, spoils relations with India. And I want to know your opinion on whether you agree that somewhere, the very fact that Trudeau has been continuously taking an anti-India stand has also encouraged these Khalistani extremists to actually go out in the open and carry out such violence. 
Well, yeah, a hundred percent, Justin Trudeau. Listen, I, I think the Indi- India has made some pretty bold accusations, and, I, um, and, and and we can get into that. And I've heard accusations for the Monder attack being directed, you know, by the Canadian government. And I think that's a bit outlandish. But is it fair to say? And I think it's reasonable to say, and I think it's right to say that there's a tacit endorsement of Palestinian violence from the highest levels of government. Um, I think they knew the potential. I mean, many of us were warning about it and they just don't care or they're in bed with it. So there's, there has been there is what I, you can did Trudeau direct this attack uh, against um, the the Monder? Probably not. Most likely, no. But is there a, a green light on for the Palestinians to do whatever they want in the country? Absolutely. Absolutely. There's a green light hung on side Justin Trudeau's door that he doesn't even attempt to hide. So that's the situation the Palestinians are in. Um, they have a complete tacit endorsement from Justin Trudeau. Lord knows what we could say about Jagmeet Singh and the NDP. But um, they've taken this green light and they've now breached them under uh, gates. And we will see where it goes from here. Uh, the Hindu community is rightfully incredibly upset, uh, mobilized tonight in in large numbers. And the story is going to develop and we'll see where it goes. Uh, we'll see if there's any future developments. But uh, I think the political class has managed to awaken something in the Hindu community, which feels completely homeless, uh, as none of the major parties have any interest in trying to win their vote. Uh, Daniel, I do want you to stay on with us uh, as we're also putting out further details of how the situation is developing. And uh, let's quickly tell our viewers that thousands of Hindus have now taken out a solidarity rally against attacks on Hindu temples in Canada. Over a thousand Canadian Hindus have gathered outside the Hindu Sabha Mandir in Brampton to protest against the repeated attacks on Hindu temples in the country. This is a day after the temple that was attacked by Khalistani extremists, organizers of the solidarity rally, Prescott. Canadian politicians and law enforcement agencies to not give further support to Khalistanis. Let's play out those eyewitness accounts after which I go back to Daniel. Hindu Canadians Canada ke bahut loyal hain aur Hindu Canadians ke sath jo bhi Canada mein ho raha hai wo theek nahi ho raha ye samay aa gaya hai ke sab politicians yahan pe is baat ko jaan le ke Hindu Canadians ke sath jo bhi ho raha hai wo galat hai aur aaj jo kuch bhi hua hai wo sab un sab ki wajah se hua hai kyunki jinhone Hindu Canadians ko kabhi samjha nahi samajhne ki koshish nahi ki unhe dar nikar kar diya aaj sab jaage hain aur jaisa ki abhi yahan sab log bol रहे थे ये शुरुआत है इसको एक इंसिडेंस ना समझें जो भी हुआ उसने जगाया है झंझोर दिया है हर हिंदू को यहाँ पे और हम चाहते हैं कि कनाडा हिंदुओं को अच्छे से ट्रीट करे क्योंकि कनाडा के लिए हिंदूज बहुत जरूरी हैं हिंदू वो लॉयल रियल कनेडियंस हैं जो कनाडा का भी भला चाहते हैं और जहाँ से आए हैं हिंदुस्तान उसका भी भला चाहते हैं और चाहते हैं कि हिंदुस्तान और कनाडा के रिश्ते मजबूत हों और जो भी ये लोग हैं जो ये सब नहीं चाहते हम सिर्फ उनके खिलाफ हैं क्योंकि वो सिर्फ हिंदुस्तान या हिंदू के खिलाफ नहीं है वो कनाडा के खिलाफ हैं वी आर डीपली हर्ट एज हिंदू कम्युनिटी व्हाट हैज हैपेंड हियर येस्टरडे एंड वी हैव कम हियर इन सपोर्ट ऑफ हिंदू कम्युनिटी हिंदू कम्युनिटी हैज contributed so much to canada and we are progressive we add so much economical value we are we follow law and order wherever we go be it canada be it anywhere and it 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 is shocking to see the reaction of politicians reaction of police how they have treated us this is a two tier policing that we have seen you would have seen videos all around circling and we have come here in support all we are asking is justice to be served law rule of law to be followed and perpetrators should be challenged should be tried in rule of law all right daniel i want to come back to you because after what has happened uh, the canadian police certainly can't tr- be trusted with uh, protecting hindu canadians in fact uh, one of their own men who turned out to be a khalistani extremist and now taking action against him is not enough fact is that the khalistani conspiracy runs much deeper than what meets the eye Well yeah I mean I I I think we've all uh made certain uh uh tacit accusations for our pre- previous phase on one of the leaders uh, of uh 
Justin and Jagmeet's coalition. So if we say that, you know, Jagmeet Singh, leader of the third party, which is in a pseudo coalition of the government, is a Khalistani, well, then there's one. Um, how many ministers in Justin Trudeau's government? That's a bunch. If you saw, if you read Usul Dessange's uh, interview, and he's been a bit clear on this, I mean, uh, he says that most of the uh, Justin Trudeau would push out normal Sikh voices in favor of Khalistan. And if you know Justin Trudeau and you know the, uh, how the Western left thinks of things, this makes sense. Um, that someone like Justin Trudeau would prefer Khalistanis to regular Sikhs, not in any economic or, or reasonable thing, but it's more exotic, um, and that makes it more fun and more interesting for Justin Trudeau to be around his fellow upper middle class uh, white um, circle. So by being able to tolerate Calistanis and have them have all this, you know, this crazy background and being able to justify terrible um, actions and beliefs in a what you see as a protected minority is a great virtue for you. It makes you a better person, makes you more understanding. And Usul Dessange and the majority of the Sikh community and me and many others say, well, no, 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 reasonable people are reasonable people, right? They're good people of all different types, bad people of all different types. Most people are fundamentally good and, you know, law abiding and, 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 and are not radical. But to Justin Trudeau, it's more fun and it's more um, virtuous, really. It's more virtuous to embrace Khalistan. It's more virtuous right. to embla- embrace the Muslim Brotherhood right. over a, a more reasonable mu- Muslim. It's, it's the way it is. Yeah. Right. Daniel, I thank you for your time. I understand it's late night in Canada. Also, we continue to track the situation very, very closely. We'll keep coming back to you for the moment we move on.